Don't miss this one, folks. The big Lord of Change has finally landed. Spiky bits. All right, welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear with you again today. Obviously, checking out these amazing releases for Demons of Zinch this, I guess, leading out of January, I want to say. So, we have three of the fantastic new releases as well as one little thing to talk about today now of course the new lord of change model 115 dollars kit comes in its own collector's box we're going to talk about that as well we got changeling demons of zinch and the only other air quotes new release this week was the blue horrors brimstone horrors right there and they're okay but here's the thing it's the same models that come in the silver tower warhammer quest right so if you already seen those, you pretty much know what's up. You get 10 of Blue Horrors, you get 10 of the Brimstone Horrors bases. But I imagine a lot of people are going to pick those models up just because of the fact that they want the splits from their pink horrors, right? So I can definitely understand that for sure, but we didn't pick up a whole lot of those. Obviously, they're, they're on the same sprues and everything like that. Nothing we haven't seen in the past. Also this week is re-releases of the pink horrors. The Screamers, the Flamers, the Chariot, all by itself, all this re-release reboxes. We're not really going to talk about that because that's just silly. It's just reboxings. Let's talk about the stuff that is new real quick. So first up, we got the Demons of Zinch Start Collecting Box for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. But, surprise, surprise, you can actually use this for Warhammer 40k as well. Because all of these, all of these units definitely play. Now, they did something a little tricky here. This Herald is actually part of the kit for this uh, this Chariot right here. He is not sold separately, believe it or not. So when you do the value on this, you have a Chariot for 40, you have the Screamers for 35, you have these little guys, the Flamers for 25, you have the Pink Horrors for 35. That all adds up to 135, I believe. Somebody check my math. So you're still getting a savings of $50 on the box, especially if you get it at a discount. You know, you're talking a pretty good rate there to have a discount at. But just be advised that this is a single kit that comes with that. Kind of see what I'm saying there? So, that being said, obviously it's all models we've seen in the past, but I did want to show you this and what you get inside because some of these releases haven't been out for a few years, so I figured what the heck. We're not going to show you all the box sets, we'll show you this, uh, this particular one right here. Because it pretty much has a lot of the re-releases in it itself. So real quick, you get the Flamers of Zinch, of course, on their new round bases. Looks like they're on 32s. The Burning Chariot of Zinch, which can be configured two different ways as the one with uh, the super exalted Flamer dude on top or with him by himself on one of those new Chariot bases right there. I think that looks to be a 75. A couple of extra blue horrors that come with him and then you can put the Herald on top because that's basically a Chariot. And we've, show we've shown you all this in the past. And then of course the Pink Horrors, a very easy kit so it does look like everything's coming with 32 millimeter bases which isn't a huge shock but it's a, it's a little kick in the pants for me because i literally have a ton of these guys on 25 millimeter bases so obviously we're gonna have to do something about that i'm wondering what flying stance they're on now oh they're still on the same flying stance hmm that's interesting because i'm pretty sure oh did they change them that's crazy because I don't remember these uh, these actually being able to socket in like that with the ball and socket joints. Let's take a look. What's the copyright on the sprue here for these screamers? No, 2011. I guess they did. I just never realized that I went ahead and magnetized my screamers, but I didn't realize that they have the ball and socket joints that go right in there. I guess that makes sense because the Dark Eldar came out around that time as well. So there you go. Ooh, and... Wait, hold up. We got all sorts of stuff. There's the Screamers. Looks like we have a a new War Scroll. Let's see what this is. A new War Scroll has appeared. Spontaneous destruction in each of your hero phases. Pick either the Herald of the Zinch or another unit in this battalion. Within nine inches of them, you can choose to either cast one additional spell of that unit this phase or make a shooting attack with all models in that unit as if it were the shooting phase. Boom, boom, boom. Well, let me tell you what. These guys shoot a lot, so that's actually pretty good. So, neat. Nito Vandito. So there is the Screamers. Here is the Flamers. Pretty much a self-contained sprue, left and right halves go together, and then you just kind of glue on the arms and the heads as you see fit. There's no rhyme or reason to it because it is the change. Okay. And then here is the sprue for uh, the chariot itself, all the different chariot pieces, some of the flames, some of the hold the upsies, the ginormous uh, super, super flamer, exalted flamer of awesomeness, of stupendousness even. 
and some of the blue horrors and different things that are a boot up in here. So there's all the different arms and things. Uh, this is all stuff we've shown on the channel before, so I'm not going to waste too much time on that because we have two brand new fantastic releases to talk more about. So there it is. Definitely worth your money. Save, five, uh, save $50. And on a box that's already $85, I feel like a $50 savings on $85 is definitely a large percentage. Somebody can check my math there. I am no mathematical genius. I just have to use a calculator all the time, or my feet, or my hands, or my fingers. Generally, that almost always works. All right, next up is Mr. Mr. We'll, we'll call him Mini Change. It's Mini Change. So this is the Changeling who previously had a much smaller model. Now this guy, uh, he got an upgrade. He's got a big ass base. At first I thought this was 32, but I'm pretty sure it's 40. He is the trickster. He has uh, various histories with the Grey Knights. And of course, you know, some some of the folks in the mortal realms as well. But he is always a hoot when he appears. I think he was also the one on the rock that uh that got the Dark Angels to fire on the Fenrisian system. Tee hee hee. Okay, so there's the changeling. Let's talk about how to put them together. Another one of those computer slice and dice miniatures, nothing new there. Lots of slices that don't seem at first to make any sense. But then once you start gluing it together, you realize that all of those crazy seams and all the crazy spots are, are uh, hiding those mold lines and things like that. So it actually starts to make rhyme or reason as you go. And you're like, oh, okay, well, that actually makes sense. So it looks like it assembles left to right, and then the hood goes on top. Almost kind of looks like a crazy moon knight in that image right there. Or a uh, cloak from Cloak and Dagger, I suppose. And then you lose some of the extra scrolls and things on the back right here. Here's his little... Um, game aid of change so you can cut that out and play with that and if you're doing age of sigmar and of course a little fantastic painting guide so it seems like oh and there's this uh, rules for warhammer 40k it's really interesting that they keep putting rules and rules into this when there's supposedly a rumored you know rules change coming out but i mean they're gonna have to change a lot of their documentation and i'm not sure that's i'm not sure we're gonna see a rules change anymore i'm really starting to to think otherwise so he does come on a 40 mil base, just like I suspected. Just kind of sizing him up from some of the, the pictures and things that have been out there. Let's see, man, get you a little closer look. So here's the halves. You can definitely see the robes are very pronounced, of course. And then you got the top right there, some of his floaty parts and his uh, crazy spectral form. It looks like you can paint that. Can you paint that? I forgot to see. I kind of want to paint that separate, to be quite honest. Yeah, you can paint that separate right there. So if, you, if you're into the airbrushing, you can probably paint that separate. Let me track it and see if it works. So it looks like you put several pieces around it and you actually build the cloak around it. But I'm not sure if you could stick up in there if it would even fit. So it looks like you stick the, the, the flames up in there. So you'd have to dry fit that to see if it would work. But if you can, you could theoretically paint it separate. It almost looks like you could. You could paint it separate like a crazy green glowy thingamabobber or flames if you wanted to do that. And then that dope staff right there, some of the scrolls. It's got his little uh, zinch palpal uh, little shoulder merit badge holders. Zinch merit badge holders, we'll go with that. So pretty cool kit, I'm digging it. I mean, obviously this is, a, this is technically a plastic redo of a kit that came out previously, so he is on, po on point with, you know, Karn the Betrayer, Mr. the Betrayer, and, you know, Eldrad, and all those cats that have been coming out. Armon. Armon got two miniatures, technically. What a, what a tryhard, that guy. Super change tryhard. So there's the change lean. And, of course, if you were counting down, you know who's left. Let's zoom out the camera for the appearance of... Whoa, that's too far. The Fate Weaver. Straight out of the Eye of Terror, the Fate Weaver has appeared in plastic. It only took 20 years, but we got him. Ta da! <laughs> if you remember going back to the 80s, the little tiny 40 millimeter four part Lord of Change, and then the one that, of course, that came out in the 90s that was fantastically sculpted for its time, it definitely stood the test of time, you know, for a good solid 
15, 20 years up until recently when plastics became so, so easy and so dynamic. To, and once you saw them on the tabletop, you just wished all of the old miniatures were immediately plastic. That is obviously the case with the Lord of Change. He's just so ginormous, dynamic, and in your face. There really isn't another character that's more iconic out there than the Lord of Change or, you know, Fate Weaver himself. So here he is. Of course, the same price as the Bloodthirster himself, and he comes in this fantastic little collector's box. Now, here's here's the rear showing Fate Weaver with that dope kind of uh, blue to purple uh, design and things like that. And, of course, himself up here with the two different ways you can equip him. You can give him the Baleful Sword, which they actually mess up in the instructions and don't show you exactly. Um, this They keep saying it's the Baleful Sword, but it's the Rod of Sword. So it, it looks like it's the same hand. We'll go over that. But... You know, you've got three different weapon options, Staff and Zinch, of course, and then the different topper for Fate Weaver, his little his little fish topper, uh, Thingamabobber, Staff of Tomorrow, right there. The only thing I don't like about this miniature, and I'll be quite upfront about it, I don't like that finger right there. I don't know what it is. It just freaks me out. I'm like, why does he have that finger like that? It doesn't make any sense to me. But it doesn't look like there's another option for it. So unfortunately, I feel like unless you use this hand here where he's holding something, you kind of stuck with it, but that is what it is. It is the grim, grim dark, the grim dark feature in which there is no fur pelt, obviously. So let's get this bad boy open and show you all there is to see. Ta da! Look at that. That's a sweet little collector's box. On the top, it's got Lord of Change. It almost looks like a Lord of the Rings box. And on the back, it's got some, you know, inset illustrations of what's on the cover: Disciples of Zinch, and of course, some Eldritch flames about the bottom very cool stuff here obviously if you're saving up to get one of these it's always cool to see stuff like this it's a great out-of-box experience or ubi as they call it all right so there's the full color instruction manual and of course the sprues for mr weaver himself and he comes on the uh, what is this? The 100 mil round? I want to say it is. This is the 100 mil round. The same thing that the Bloodthirster. Actually, no, the Bloodthirster does not come on this. The Magnus comes on this. Bloodthirster came on the normal Dread Knight base, I believe. So that's a little bit of a departure. Now, in the Age of Sigmar, I guess you could use either or, of course. So let's take a look at this manual. I want to run you through some things real quick just to be on the lookout for. Of course, it makes the two different kits. And you also have the options between the staff, the rod of sorcery, and the belt of sword. Of course, Fate Weaver is just, you only make him the, the same way. You don't really have many options there. Okay. So first off, you're going to assemble it the same way for each one. It's not even a thing. Like, it's super predictable and easy to understand. Again, there's all sorts of slices and cutouts and things that don't make any sense, but they overall, they generally hide your mold lines and really help enhance the miniature. Just kind of looking at at, um, at all this, that's kind of the way it is. Now, once you get to this point, you're like, oh, okay, well, it's time to figure out what you want to do. So here, now you have to figure out which one you're going to put together. If you want to go with the Lord of Change, with the Staff of Zinch and the Rod of Sorcery, slash Baleful Sword, but I think this was meant to be the Baleful Sword right here, but it isn't. And then with the Staff of Zinch right here. Now, here's the trick. These arms right here, I think it's part 35 that you'll see right here that goes on top of part 36 are the same. So he has this arm that's out, right? He has this arm right here, which is 41 and 42, I believe. Then he has 35 and 36, 35 and 36, and then this arm stays the same, but it twists because attached to the staff is his hand. So no matter what you do to attach the staff, you either attach it straight or you twist it. And then over here, if you're using this 42 one, you either use it for the separate weapon or you twist it and it combines and it holds both. And they show you on the instruction manual how that you, that you put the, the hand out like this and you put the staff in it and then you put the other hand kind of holding it, gripping it over. So obviously dry fit all the stuff, but just to let, just to give you a heads up, like you will have extra parts and this looks to be wrong. This should be the Balfour Sword right here, which they don't seem to, to ever show. They just keep, oh, there it is right there, the Balfour Sword. So they didn't show it here, but you obviously have that option right here. It's the same heft for both and then just has a different topper. So you might have one of these left over that you can use for like an icon piece or, you know, some sort of standard or thing like that. And then here's the Staff of Zinch. If you want to go the two-handed route, and like I said, you put it right underneath, and then the th part 35 comes down and kind of sandwiches 
the whole uh, construction right there. And then it gets into the nitty gritty stuff, like you gotta add a head, of course, you gotta add the extra parts to the feathers. And then it gets into the wings, which look to be very dope and super multi-part. There's a couple of gotchas right here. It looks like that they're very specific about how the folds go together. There looks like there's a cut here and there's a cut here, but you might line it up accidentally wrong for some reason. Like they're not supposed to be flush together. They're supposed to be one goes over top of the other. Now I haven't, I haven't pieced this together yet, so I can't give you a, a lot of advice, but this looks to be a very important section here. So pay close attention to it. And then the grubbins come on at the very end. You got a shoulder pad, you got a scroll, you got some brimstone horrors, and it looks like some sort of sacrificial dagger or sling kind of thing right there. Very easy stuff. So that's the Lord of Change part. And of course the rules and yada yada. We talked about that already. Then it gets into Mr. Fate Weaver, Mr. Fatesy himself. And he, of course, is armed with the Staff of Tomorrow, traditional way to put them together. Nothing new right there, except for he has this extra, the little part 62 is that sucker arm, which I don't particularly, it just freaks me out. I don't know what it is about. It just, it just freaks me out. I don't like it. Regardless, <laughs> it's there and they want you to use it. Now I'm sure I'm gonna try to not use it, but we'll see how far I get with that one. And then it gets into all of this stuff here. His tongue, uh, you can do, you know, the different ones for the different heads and then they attach right onto there. So it's a completely different assembly for the head area, uh, completely different assembly for the top of the, or the pinions of the wings, I guess they're called. So it doesn't, he doesn't use the same pinions as the Lord of Change. Right there, you can see they're kind of um, almost twin tail comedy, I guess. And these are more like Zinchian symbol. And then of course the gotchas with the wings as well. And then the growing phase, and that's pretty much the same as the Lord of Change. So overall, it looks, once you get it all kind of clipped out and scrubbed down and, and trimmed and everything, and make sure you dry fit everything more than once, it seems like it's actually a pretty easy kit to get together. So that's about it for this one. Errors, omissions, clarifications, please leave us in the comments field below. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.